Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective. And today I have this interesting silver colored ThinkPad here. And this is the ThinkPad E480. Now the E series is essentially your step down economically and feature wise from your T series. So the one that you might want to compare this to, especially if you're shopping around for price, is actually the T480, and I'll leave a video about that linked over here. Just because it's cheaper doesn't mean that it compromises on the internals, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. So as you can see, this is a beautiful silver color, which is not the traditional color of ThinkPads. However, it still looks fairly sharp. It has a raised logo here on the aluminum top case, and then the rest is an ABS or polycarbonate plastic. So you are saving a little bit of money on some of the build materials, but the screen is reinforced with that aluminum, which is good to see. Speaking of the screen, let's go ahead and start talking about some of those specifications. We do have a 14 inch, either 1366 by 768 TN panel, which is 220 nits, or you can get the 920 by 1080 IPS 250 nit panel, which is obviously going to be the much more desirable display. The keyboard that comes with it is either backlight or not backlight, and because there is no pictogram on the spacebar here, we do know that this is a non-backlit variant. CPUs on this either came in 7th or 8th generation Intel. So 7th gen was the i3-7020U, the i3-7130U, and then the i5-7200U. If you had those, it was obviously the Intel HD 620 graphics. But if you did have the 8th generation Intel, which was the i3-8130U, the i5-8250U, or the i7-8550U, then you were rocking the Intel UHD 620. A few machines came with the AMD Radeon RX 550, 2GB of dedicated video memory. Speaking of memory, up to 32 gigabytes of DDR4 2400 megahertz RAM was possible in these units. And depending on the CPU, that 2400 megahertz RAM would either run at 2133 megahertz. Now, whether or not it's like the T480 where you could cram up to 64 gigs of RAM, depending on the board support, I have not been able to find anecdotal evidence of that online like I did for the T480. So if you do have one of these and you did run 64 gigs of RAM for whatever reason, please let me know in the comments down below. The battery that was inside of this is a 45 watt hour battery. Now, depending on which CPU you got in this, there would be a huge variance in what you could expect for battery life. Uh, if you're looking at a seventh gen i3, versus an 8th gen i7, that's going to run that battery down at a considerably different clip. So just be aware that your battery life will vary considerably even within the specifications that shipped with this unit. This is the Intel 8th generation i5, so we do know that it's not going to be the easiest on battery life when it comes to that 45 watt hour battery, but it should still be fairly respectable. With all that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk a little bit about ports. So on the left-hand side of the machine here, we have the USB Type-C for power, HDMI, USB 3.0, USB 3.0 always on, and then the headphone microphone combo jack. On the other side, we have a micro SD card, USB 2.0, Ethernet, and a Kensington lock slot. And then along the back, we have absolutely nothing. And then on the front, we have absolutely nothing as well. You will note that the machine is a little bit thicker, although they are using chamfering to a much more significant degree to make it feel thinner wherever possible. But overall, in terms of the specifications on the inside, so long as you don't mind going without a few features like higher screen resolutions, touch displays, docks, uh, Thunderbolt 3, there is still a lot to like in this. And the prices, because of the CPU and other configurations, are going to uh, vary very wildly. So we're talking about as low as 220 US dollars all the way up to 600 depending on how these are configured. With that being said, let's go ahead and flip this over and see what it looks like on the inside. So to get on the inside we are going to need a trusty screwdriver and then we are going to go around and loosen all of the screws that are present on the bottom of the machine. All 
All right, with all of our screws loose, I believe these are captive. Let's find out. And they are. Well, let's see if we can get into this device. We can actually see it starting to separate up here in that top hand corner. And because the bottom is plastic, we are going to try and stay away from a metal pry tool if we can. And we're just going to get started popping the plastic clips. So as we can see on the inside, this is still a very upgradable and serviceable machine. We have our Wi-Fi card, two RAM slots, the battery, an M.2 2280 SSD slot, and a two and a half inch bay. So you can cram quite a bit of storage in this if you max out this bay and then the SSD slot as well. So even though this might be a more inexpensive unit, especially if you're getting the seventh or eighth gen Intel, there is an awful lot of value for money, even though this might not carry some of the robustness of the other ThinkPad lines. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and throw this back together, do some boot tests, and finish up the video. All right, with everything back together, let's open this up and turn it on. And there we go, we are in. We are running Windows on this and there is really uh, no concerns about getting this thing to work as you would expect. We've got a beautiful i5-8250U and eight gigabytes of RAM waiting for us in there. And the display is pretty darn good. Viewing angles won't be absolutely stellar just simply because of the display itself. But this is the 1920 by 1080 panel. So still very respectable. We hear our fans humming nice and quietly there as things are warming up. We do, of course, have that 720p web camera with microphone array sitting at the top. And realistically, if you're looking for something that's relatively inexpensive, you love the idea of the engineering and upgradability of a ThinkPad, but you don't necessarily want to spend an absorbent amount of money for, say, the T480, or if one is simply not available and this is, this is still not a bad machine. It does have a few compromises on the upper end of performance, but in terms of what you get core hardware wise, as well as the general appearance, the track point, the whole layout, the beautiful keyboard, all of those fundamental elements are still there, even if it might not be the traditional color. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this quick look at the E480. It is a very nice little economical and viable option in the year 2022 now and as you can see with its TPM 2.0 chip it is more than capable of natively running Windows 11 with the right CPU of course. If you've enjoyed this sort of content and would like to see more I would encourage you to do the big four. Please like the video, share, subscribe and hit that notification bell so the next time I feature a ThinkPad which let's be realistic here will be sooner rather than later you'll be the first to know about it. Thank you so much and I will see you next time.